going on? <clears throat> I'm smoking my Orlick Golden Slice and my Dr. Grey Bowl. There it is right there. See it? I found out something about that special pipe that was given to me. That it, the carving, let me show it again. The carving is a World War One drill sergeant. World War One, and has the cap that goes on it at this individual war. And I'm only going to smoke this pipe on special occasions. It's a good pipe. It's very lightweight, and uh, it's a special pipe. Maybe once a month. I'll smoke it. I have it set aside only for my Sutcliffe Maple Street. That's it. It's the only thing I'm going to smoke in that thing. A treasure piece. Now, what the hell? Everybody's free to say what they want. I'm kind of a comedian, so I'm going to have the joke of the day. <clears throat> About a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I went with a buddy of mine. First time in the years I set, for, I set foot in a Catholic church. Listening to the Mass priest gave a great mass but I was starting to fall asleep through it whatever it was mass whatever I'm not familiar with. so I went outside and I told my buddy I says I looked I pointed at the wall I said you know they should have a disclosure here he goes what do you mean I have a warning and it should read this way the following program may cause drowsiness do not attempt to drive a car or operate machinery if upon returning home you cannot get an erection for four hours or more, the next week go down to the ba to the Black Baptist Church and watch the girls dance. Let's probably get a few hits off that one. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't really care anymore. I don't want to be rude, but I see all kinds of uploads with all kinds of quotes, people talking about this, talking about that. It's almost like a smoke shop, this community, so some people don't like my way, my manner, my humor. I just take my pipe, go to another area of the smoke shop, hang out with people that are okay with it. No, I don't hate Catholics. Just a joke. To me, it's a harmless joke. And I don't hate Black Baptists. It's just when I do... When I did watch the, the Blues Brothers, the movie, <laughs> I was thinking of that. I made up that joke a few years ago. I actually told that one on stage. The crowd thought it was funny. Especially the black dude that opened up the event. That was organizing the event. There's all these musicians playing guitars and everything. I went in when they were taking a break. Got up there a few times when they... I did it about six times in this place. You had musicians. And you had a half an hour of a stand-up comic getting all these guitar players and drummers and everybody 
I bombed once. I was trying some new material and I didn't prepare enough. So that's what happens. The dude that organizes it came up and said, uh, what the fuck happened? I says, well, don't prepare, this is what happened. Next time, prepare. I used to be in a storytelling group in Boston. I haven't gone down there in a couple of years. And, uh, met a lot of famous comedians down there, in the Boston area. There was a poet that was there, and I was talking to him. We were talking about the arts and how comedy is an art form, and talking about the difference between the arts. And I says, the difference between comedians and writers and poets is that you guys, you folks did a lot better in English when you were at school, and we were clowning around too much. And I said, the other difference between comedians and poets, with poets, it takes about 300 years before people re reading the poetry realize that the dude was telling them all to go fuck themselves. <laughs> people are upset, but the dude's underground. They can't do anything to him. With us comedians, we get the bananas and fruit thrown at us within five seconds after we crack the joke and tell them the same thing. Actually, I don't tell them to go fuck themselves. It's more like crack a joke that insults somebody. Hey, the famous comedian Gallagher would have thrown it back. I liked him. But my favorite comedian, the comedian's comedian, I call him. It was actually a lot of them, but George Carlin was definitely. Some of the older comedians, Sid Caesar, Johnny Carson. Sid Caesar to me. <laughs> They interviewed, I saw an interview with him once. The interviewer said, asked him a question. Why did you, uh, how did you, how, how did you get all your material to be a comedian, be involved in this business? He said, well, my father and, my father and I set up a delicates, a delicatessen, delicatessen, a delicatessen in, uh, Chicago. And, uh, It was right across the street from the, the factories. And people used to come in, the old diner. All these different ethnic groups, Italians, Irish, Polish, whatever, Jewish. It was Sid Cecil was Jewish. And uh, he said each one of these cultures had these uh, people from these cultures, they had their own unique manner. And they would sometimes argue back and forth. He says the Italians would wave their hands around. The Irish had their way. And he says from that point forward, as a young boy, I, I started watching them. And uh, a lot of my skits, he said, a lot of things I thought of was based on what I saw as I was growing up as a kid. Washing dishes for my old man. waiting on tables. I mentioned that movie, The Blues Brothers. That was one of the funniest movies I ever saw in my life. 
one great serious part in the movie was when they had John Lee Hooker playing his stuff. That was I like John Lee Hooker. He was good. Everybody makes a big fuss about B.B. King. I never liked him. I never liked him. I'll take John Lee Hooker over B.B. King any day of the week. That's just my preference. But there was another guy with the last name King, and he died young. I think ZZ Top kind of got their name from him. He was ZZ King. ZZ King. He died young. He was he was a damn good guitar player. Like I said before, I'm not going to have any closing comments. I'm just going to smoke away into oblivion. <laughs>